Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss about Gaussian Error Linear Unit, which is GELU, and its importance. We will see the intuition behind this activation function, and then its performance comparison with ReLU. GELU combines both the functionalities of ReLU and Dropout. We know that ReLU multiplies the input by 0 or 1, depending on its sign. So if the input is negative, then it will become 0. That means it multiplies the input with 0. If the input is positive, then it multiplies with 1. That means the same input is passed to the next neuron. So it is either multiplying with 1 or 0. And dropout randomly drops some neurons to create the regularization effect. So dropout kind of multiplies the inputs with zeros in these cases. So there is no deterministic algorithm that it has to drop out this neuron and this neuron. It does randomly. Now we merge these two functionalities and create a new activation function called GELU. So GELU is a deterministic nonlinearity because it should be deterministic, it should not be stochastic, that encapsulates a stochastic regularization effect. So simply put, if this is my weighted sum, in GELU, I am multiplying my input with a value m. And what is this value m? This m is the cumulative distribution function of the normal distribution at that particular input. What does this mean? Let's understand this step by step. First, let us consider an input x with the dimension m by n. So m is my batch size, n is the number of features. I am assuming that this x belongs to a normal distribution. And this is observed in most of the networks also that this is the pre activation. That means the input going to the activation function. And the pre-activations follow normal distribution in most of the networks. So these are pre-activations. This is the example of ResNet50 on ImageNet dataset. So each input feature in this X is a random variable from the normal distribution. And the distribution has zero mean and standard deviation as one. This can be visualized using probability density function of this function like this. So this is the probability density function of normal distribution. And this is the general formula for normal distribution with the sigma and mu. But when we take zero mean and unit standard deviation or unit variance, you can say, then it will become this. So with mu equal to zero and sigma equal to one. Now let's try to add the functionality of ReLU stochastically. ReLU is a zero to identity mapping function. That means it will give zero for negative inputs and it will give the same output for the positive inputs. So it is zero to identity function. It behaves as zero mapping function and here it behaves as identity function. Now let's describe this kind of zero to identity mapping function using the distributions. We would also like the larger values of x, whatever the input x we are having, for larger values in that we should have a large probability of being preserved. That means being multiplied by one. So we can do this by defining a function like this. What does this mean? So it means that for a specific input xij, the probability of preserving this is equal to the probability that any input xij is less than or equal to this particular input. In case of discrete probability distributions, we can get this by summing all the probabilities of all the values less than or equal to x of ij. But in case of continuous distributions, we need to take the integration. So this is what we are doing here. It is ranging from minus infinity to xij. That means for all the values less than xij, it sums up all the values under the curve of the density function. So this is cumulative distribution function and this looks visually like this. If you observe this, if the x is becoming larger, the probability of preserving this increases. So you can think of this phi of x as a kind of value which is getting multiplied with the input for giving the output of the activation function. We saw that in case of GELU, the activation function is x into m, right? So we are multiplying the input with some value m. So you can think of this phi of x as that m value which is being multiplied by the input. Now this phi of x is equal to the area under the probability density curve to the left of x. So that means from minus infinity to x, whatever the area under the curve is there, that is our phi of x function. And here is the visualization for that. If you see here, if x value is minus 2, this is still here, the area of the curve under this. If x value is 0, till here the area of the curve under this, it will be the phi of x. So as the x value increases from minus to plus 4, the phi of x value increases because this is the total area under the curve. Whatever we have done so far is defining a function that applies a 0 to identity mapping to the input, right? Our activation function should multiply the input with this particular function. So the GELU activation is x into phi of x. Hope you understood everything so far. Now our problem is how do we implement this? 
Have you heard of gas error function? Generally, it is represented by ERF, and this is a special function in probability and statistics. This can be defined using this. And this error function is actually implemented in many libraries like SciPy, TensorFlow, PyTorch, all these libraries have this implementation. So if we can somehow represent phi of x in terms of this error function, then we can use those libraries for our GALU activation. So by doing some substitutions, we can represent phi of x in terms of ERF like this. And our GALU activation function is x into this phi of x. So it becomes this. So finally, we have reached our definition of GALU activation. And it is this x into phi of x, which is x into phi of x represented in terms of error function. Now, this ERF function has the implementation in TensorFlow, SciPy, all these libraries, but it is pretty complex. To compute this, it will take some time. So, to use it in the neural networks for all the neurons, for all the hidden layers, it is not feasible. So, they have approximated this function in terms of both tan h function and sigmoid function. This is the approximation of GALU in terms of tan h, but the sigmoid version is much simpler. This is the approximation of GALU in terms of sigmoid function. So, sigmoid of 1.7x. So, this is the sigmoid approximation and this is the graph looks like. So, with this sigmoid approximation, it is easy to implement in Python also and it is faster compared to the original implementation. Now, let's have a look at the derivative of GALU activation. So, the definition consists of two functions. It's a combination of x and phi of x. So, we need to apply the multiplication rule for the derivative. So, when I apply multiplication rule for x into phi of x, so phi of x into derivative of x and x into derivative of phi of x. So, this is 1. So, it will become phi of x plus x into derivative of phi of x is actually the probability of x equal to x. This phi of x equal to x is actually the value of this density function at that particular x. And the derivative looks like this. They have conducted experiments on MNIST, CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 datasets to prove that GALU is performing better than RELU and other variants. So if you observe this graph, this is a classification error for CIFAR 10. And the GALU is performing better than RELU and ELU, which is exponential linear unit, for both training and for testing. So these curves are for the training error and these curves are for the testing error. If you observe as the number of epochs increases, all three are converging to the same point. But in the beginning, GALU is converging much faster compared to other two. Now let's have a look at its Python implementation. So these two are the implementations of GALU in terms of ERF. This is the original definition. We have this ERF function in uh, SciFi, TensorFlow and PyTorch. So we can implement this uh, GALU with respect to ERF like this. But if you want to implement from scratch, then you can implement its sigmoid approximation, which is this. So this is the definition of sigmoid, 1 by 1 plus e4 minus x. And GALU is x into sigmoid of 1 plus 7x. So this we can implement because we know the sigmoid function. And it's very simple to implement this. Now let's see this in Colab and plot the graph of GALU. So I'm initializing NumPy and Matplotlib. So this is the definition for sigmoid and this is for GALU. I am plotting the curve for the inputs ranging from minus 4 to plus 4. Let's see how it looks like. This is the definition for sigmoid approximation. Yeah, this looks like this. That's all from this video. We have gone through almost all the activation functions in this mini series. We have almost seen around 12 to 13 activation functions. I have shared the playlist of this course in the description. If you like the content, please hit the like button. See you next time. Thank you.